Welcome, everybody. We have got something for you today. We're going to talk about Pennsylvania's possible adult use licensing that will be out if Senate Bill 350 passes. Senate Bill 350 has been introduced into the Pennsylvania House by this Senator Dalen Leach. And what does Senate Bill 350 have to do? It has to do a lot, by the way, because it's going to establish a rational and fair protocol for the legal use, cultivation, and sale of cannabis. Well, what types of licenses will there be? We can go right over here and let me blow that up for you. And you'll see that there is a grower license. There is a home grower license. There's a micro grower license. Wait, home grow needs a license? And it says, yeah. An individual who owns a permit issued by the department to grow cannabis in the person's home for personal use. So they've made a distinction between a micro grower, a grower and a home grower. And then, of course, there is also a dispensary. Oh, there's the grant program. We'll get back to the grant program because it appears that unlike other states, uh, well, I've read it and it's very, very sparse when it comes to the social use aspects. They do say that they are going to try to empower some social use and lower the barriers of entry to those people that have been most hurt by the cannabis industry. The problem with that is it doesn't really have a lot of meat and potatoes on it. Um, one of the things that I can do is, again, share my screen, and then we can do a little bit of snooping, not into Senator Dale and Leach, but here's the actual bill itself. And as you can see right here, they talk about this grant program, the Adult Use Cannabis Grant Program is established under subchapter E of this, and that's supposed to do something for social equity. Oh, there's no social equity on there. Uh, equity. Ec well, the word equity only appears once. That's kind of strange. So if you go all the way down to the types of E. Well, there's only 4,234 E's. Let's try subchapter. Subchapter E only appears three times. Subchapter E, Adult Use Cannabis Grant Program, all very important if you want to get those grants. And then there are going to be awards of grants and limited grants. Uh, these grants are going to be for not just growers, processors, dispensers, and micro growers who were harmed by the effects of cannabis prohibition prior to the effective date of this schedule. So they do have some type of social equity built in uh, through this Adult Use Cannabis Grant Program. And it's for very impoverished people in the sense that an annual household income below $80,000. It's just very difficult to own a business as highly regulated uh, with as many moving pieces and overhead costs on $80,000 or, or less a year. And they have limited the grants to not exceed only $2 million annually. Again, the uh, I, I would consider that to be adequately capitalized for maybe three dispensaries. That's just not that much money. So the money doesn't really matter all that much. Moreover, if we go back over to it, they, if we look at Dalen Leach's proposals, especially his proposals regarding the social equity aspect, you can see that the social equity aspect that they did is more along the lines of what has not worked in Massachusetts because you have to like jump over the license before you can get into the grants as opposed to what they've done in Maryland and in Illinois where they take the social equity and they put it into the application process itself so that the uh, companies that are formed have to uh, come together with people that have social equity talent and people that have capital talent and they have a brand new business that results. Oh, deliveries. That's interesting. A delivery permit. That is done unlike some other ones, but so a delivery may transport cannabis from dispensaries to consumers. They may walk or use any transportation unless it's otherwise prohibited. That's, that's really neat. One of the cool things that SB 350 has is the cannabis dispensary delivery drivers. Unlike in other states, for example, Illinois, there are no delivery drivers in this Pennsylvania bill, provided that it passes, there will be delivery in Pennsylvania. And let's talk about its social equity a little bit more. The social equity starts to say, uh, let's see, we'll offer training program to teach people how to grow and process cannabis, how to comply with the state and federal cannabis laws, and how to start and run a small cannabis business. For those who satisfactorily complete the program and who have 
previous cannabis related convictions or a how and a household income below eighty thousand dollars they may then apply for state grants and interest free loans that they will use to start their own cannabis businesses revenue raised from taxation and permit fees a cost associated with regulation and enforcement after cost 95 percent of the minimum an estimated 500 percent will be appropriated for the state's basic public education subsidy the other thing that social equity means to pennsylvania's version of adult use provided that sb 350 passes is a good portion of the tax revenue will go toward public schools as a state's basic public education subsidy. This isn't all that different than what they did in Colorado. Colorado also allowed for a lot of money to go back to the children. It looks like Pennsylvania might have a whole bunch of new opportunity in the adult use industry. And if you want to learn more on that, please do. Once again, don't forget, Google Cannabis Lawyer. Find my website. Maybe what you want to do is Google Pennsylvania cannabis processor application. I wonder what happens if we do that. Well, uh, here's here's the, the the website that I have, and it has all these wonderful ones here, even the Pennsylvania home grower application. Oh, yes, the Pennsylvania home grower application. I can't believe they're going to make you get licensed. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I'm going to replace this video with the one I'm currently filming. Yay. Uh, but maybe I will put that video back up there in case you have any questions about your hemp farms. And let's see how Pennsylvania home grower applications Googling for us right now. P-E-N. So, oh, there we go. How about the micro growers license? Uh, result four. That's not too bad. It's not too bad to be result four already. The thing that might suck is that this this law won't pass, but you're not going to let that happen, are you? You're going to go out there and you're going to call the, the Senate in Pennsylvania and you're going to say, hey, sick of buying this dirty weed over the, uh, you know, from the from a dealer. It's all moldy and and they got no oversight. I don't know what he put in it. And I'm, I'm just kind of assuming that the strain that he says, the strain that it is. Don't put up with that black market shit. Vote for SB 350. And of course, do not forget to like and subscribe because if you do that, you'll get notification every Wednesday of our cannabis legalization news, a broadcast that we do with uh, me and Miggy. And then we have great guests uh, from either the industry itself or other activists that are helping to change the laws. Hope to see you then.